Hey guys, Aaron from Golf Custom here. With so many people wanting me to make them knives these days, I figured it was time that I did even more research on whether there was a blade steel that holds an edge better and is even more impact resistant than the O1 steel that I've been using in the past. With that in mind, over the last five weeks, I made and then destroyed 12 blades in five different steels. It's taken nearly 200 hours to complete the testing, but I'm very happy with the results. So, as is my way, I've documented the entire process, and here it is for you guys to see. I hope you enjoy the video. First, I need to make a pattern to use for the test blades. For the blade portion, I use the exact same blade shape as a 4-inch Resolute. This helps make sure that the testing will be directly applicable to the knives that I make for customers. The tang was made rectangular to reduce the amount of work needed in that area, and also to allow the blades to be mounted to testing rigs easily. Once the pattern is completed, it's time to start transferring it to some steel. Here I'm covering a steel bar and layout die to help show up the scratch marks left by the scribe. The position of each handle hole is transferred to the steel using a transfer punch. The steel blank is now parted off from the bar and then turned into a test blade. I'm not going to show the complete process for every knife, I just wanted to give you an overall idea of the steps involved. Each blade blank was engraved on the tang with the name of the steel for identification purposes. Now that the profile is roughed out, I'll cut the coil on my milling machine. The process of testing started just before I got my grinder. The first few blades were done using my filing jig, and the remainder were made on my new belt grinder. The edge thickness on every blade needed to be as similar as possible in order to make the tests valid. Now that the blades are done, it's time to begin the heat treatment process. Here I'm coating an O1 blade in an anti-scale compound to protect it from oxygen during the heat treatment. Some blades needed even better protection from oxygen during heat treatment. Those blades were enclosed in an airtight envelope made from stainless steel foil. One O1 blade was heat treated homebrew style in my small forge. The rest of the blades were heat treated in a kiln. Some of the blades were quenched in oil. Some of the blades were quenched in still air. and the remainder of the blades were plate quenched, which means that they were cooled quickly between two large plates of aluminum. Here you can see one of the plate quenched blades being removed from its protective foil envelope. Each of the test blades received a sub-zero treatment in dry ice and isopropanol either before or after the first temper cycle. Here you can see one of the blades sitting in the supercooled isopropanol solution. This sub-zero treatment helps complete the transformative process in the steel that was started by the quench. Each blade was then tempered at the appropriate temperature, either in the oven or in the kiln. After heat treatment, all of the blades were sandblasted so they would be as identical as possible. The identifying engravings on each blade were then covered up. The knives were shuffled and assigned identifying numbers randomly. This was so I could perform the test on the steels without being able to unconsciously bias the outcome in favour of one steel or another. 
The blades were then honed down at the edge so that they were each the same thickness as the thickest blade in order to ensure consistency. Now comes the first test, ease of sharpening. Each blade was sharpened using an identical method and the sharpening time was recorded. The difference in time between the blades was not enough to make me favor one blade over another. Next, each blade was stropped on the split side of a piece of leather. As you can see, all the blades ended up shaving sharp with no problems. Now onto the fine edge retention test. A one inch section of each blade was used to make multiple cuts in quarter inch sisal rope. After 20 cuts with each knife, the blade was tested for sharpness on phone book paper. The number of cuts each blade made before failing the phone book paper test was noted down. Because this test was very subjective, I repeated it four times with each blade to get a useful set of data. After a resharpening came the coarse edge retention test. Cardboard is incredibly abrasive and really hard on knife edges, so each blade was used to cut almost 300 feet of cardboard. The differences between most of the blades was actually surprisingly little, only a few stood out as having poor edge retention. Before getting into the more destructive tests, I wanted to put each blade through some real world abuse. Each blade was battened through several blocks of walnut across the grain with the aid of a 16 ounce claw hammer. All of the blades did very well in this test with no appreciable edge damage, and only minor damage at the spine. The next test was an edge strength test. I made up a rig that could drop a test blade into a wooden impact block in a repeatable way. Unfortunately, it turned out that the forces involved were not enough to damage any of the blades so I upgraded the impact block to a bar of aluminum. That still didn't do the trick, so I ended up upgrading again to a bar of steel as the impact block. This damaged the edges a bit, but the damage was very minor and pretty much consistent across all of the blades. Not much to be learnt from that. In order to try and get some useful results, I decided to get a bit less scientific. Bring out the crowbar! The difference after the crowbar impact test was remarkable. On the left you see the blade that handled the crowbar test the best, and on the right, one of the blades that handled it the worst. The tip of a knife is often the most used and abused part, so it's important to me that it is strong. Here I'm embedding the tip of each knife into a block of hard maple, then prying it out to see whether it will snap off under the strain, or preferably just bend a little. Roughly half the blades failed this test. Here you can see what the first batch of test blades looked like after all that abuse. A few of them are still in amazingly good shape. Now it's time to say goodbye to each blade as part of the final toughness test, the bend test. Ideally a knife would never be used as a pry bar, but in an emergency you use what you have at hand. My primary consideration in this test is making sure that a blade would give you plenty of warning before breaking. You should be able to see it flexing, even at an awkward angle, before it breaks. If it breaks without giving the user much warning, then I consider that to be a failure. Holy shit! The difference between the blades in this test was again pretty amazing. The worst broke at an angle of only 10 degrees, and the best blade made it all the way to 90 degrees. Here you can see the first batch of test blades after their ordeal. None of them are looking much like knives anymore. Now it's time for me to unwrap the blades and find out which one is which. I have to say it was kind of like Christmas. The top three steels overall were CPM3V, 
A2 and O1. The running between CPM3V and A2 was very close. So as you can see, some of the results that I got during my testing were simply amazing. The most tough steel was many, many times tougher than the least tough steel. Not only highlights the differences between the steels, but also the importance of proper heat treat for each particular steel. For instance, A2 was simultaneously the least tough steel and the second most tough steel simply because of different heat treat schedules. Now that I've got my heat treatment for A2 school steel ironed out, I'm planning on using it in all of my Resolute knives going forward. It's tough, it's supremely impact resistant, and it holds an edge very, very well. It's also more corrosion resistant than O1 and accessible in all the sizes that I need in order to make my knives. I'm looking forward to getting the first generation two Resolute knives out into the field with you guys.